Okay, this is Math 240 Lecture 5. The title of the lecture is Vector Spaces. It's officially from Section 4.2 of our text. We're going to look at the definition of a vector space and go through some examples. So we're going to start with a set of elements that we're going to call vectors. And we're going to label that set capital V. And we're going to find out that they don't have to be our general notion of what a vector is, but we start with this set, and then from there we use a second set where that set is a set of numbers. And so we call that set capital F. And we call the numbers scalars. So with these two sets, what we do is we define two operations on the set V using F as well. First up is vector addition. If I take two vectors that are inside of the set V, I have to talk about exactly how I go about adding those vectors. And then the second operation is called scalar multiplication. If I take a scalar, a number, from set F, what does it mean to multiply that number by a vector from set V? We have to define these. So it's the two sets with the two operations defined. Then what we have um, will be a vector space if it satisfies 10 axioms. So in these axioms, what I'm going to do is use the letters U, V, and W to represent vectors and the letters K and C the variables k and c to represent the real numbers. So u, v, and w are elements of v vectors, and k and c are elements of f. They're scalars, they're numbers. In order to be a vector space, there are five addition axioms that must be true. First up is that when you add two vectors, u and v, what you get out, the vector sum, must also be in your vector space. That property is called closure under addition. You don't want to add two vectors in V and end up with a vector that's not in V. Okay, so when you add two vectors, that the result must also be a vector from your from your uh, your set V. Second property. When you add two vectors u and v, it shouldn't matter the order in which you add them in. So if I go u plus v first, then it should be the same as v plus u. That property is called commutativity. So you need to have the ability to switch the order when you're doing addition. Thirdly, we need to be able to take three vectors and group them in a way that it shouldn't matter which two we add first. So if we have u plus v plus w, where we add v and w first, it should be the same as if we added the first two, u and v first, and then added w. And that's associativity. Fourth property. We need to have an additive identity. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be the number zero or the vector zero. Okay. We're going to find out later that our notion of zero has to be expanded. But the idea of an added identity is the following. Every vector that's in V, when added to this additive identity, what you get back is the vector itself. And so we think of the notion of zero as that entity, but when we start making stranger addition and scalar multiplication, then the idea is maybe it won't be actually what we know as zero. Okay, and that's the additive identity property. And then the fifth addiction, addition axiom is the fact that I need to have an additive inverse. So if I take any vector v, there needs to be another vector around. Now we call it minus v where basically when I add those two together, I get back to the additive identity 
I get back to the zero vector. Everyone has to have their opposite also in the set. And so that property is, is called additive inverse. So there's five addition axioms that must hold. Closure and addition, commutative, associative, and then you need an additive identity and an additive inverse to get you back to that identity. And that's half the story for vector space. The other half of the story is about the scalar multiplication axioms. First up is closure again. If you scale any vector that's in V, the result of that scaled vector should also be in V, should, be, should also be in your set of vectors. And that's closure under scalar multiplication. Number seven, if you take the vector sum U and V, and scale that vector sum. It would be the same as if you were to scale each of them first and then add. Okay, and so what you're doing there is distributing a scalar across a vector sum. That property, that, that axiom must hold. Number eight, now I'm adding two scalars together. Remember K and C are scalars. I'm adding two scalars first and that result then will be used to scale the vector u. You can instead scale the vector u by the one scalar, scale the vector u by the other scalar, and then add. So it's another kind of a distributive property. This time you're distributing over a scalar sum. You're distributing the, uh, the scalar um, multiplication of your vector u. Property number nine, two more to go. Property number nine says, well, what if you take two scalars and multiply them first and then scale your vector? Well, then we're gonna find out that you can scale the vector. Actually, it turns out you can scale the vector with either scalar and then scale with the other scalar. And so this one has it only as, um, you can scale the vector U with the, vector, with the scalar C and then scale with K, but it also could be the other way around. Your, um, your, your, your scalars are normally real numbers, and so they, they are commutative. We can convert, we can switch them around. So this is also equal to C, and then we scale U by K. All right, great. So that's associativity of your scalars. And then finally, the last property is that we need a number, one of the scalars must exist, that when we scale the vector, it doesn't change it. We get the vector back. And this is called a multiplicative identity, a scalar identity. Okay, we had five addition axioms and five scalar multiplication axioms. And just want you to notice that there is no axiom about a, multi, um, a multiplicative inverse. We had, we had an additive identity and an additive inverse, but we just have a scalar identity, a multiplicative identity. We do not have, as, as, a, as an axiom, a multiplicative inverse. So those are the 10 axioms that define a vector space. In the next video, we look at some examples of vector spaces, and then we look at some examples of things that are not vector spaces.